Alright guys, welcome back. This is Malik, and we're going to get into Forensic Mission number 3, uh, Papa Smurphy's Pizza. We have to examine some files for some evidence. Uh, and we're going to do this one a little bit different. I am not going to take you, I haven't finished this one, I'm not going to take you to the final. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to take you as far as I've gotten. I played with it for just a little bit. Take you as far as I've gotten. Talk about the files we have. Kind of point you in some directions. And see if you guys uh, and gals can run with it from here and come up with the solution. Uh, whoever posts in the comments field that they came up with the solution first. Um, we'll get together uh, over email or something. We'll talk about how you did it. Uh, I will post a video on the solution. Um, of course, you'll get full credit for being the one to, to break this one. And uh, I think I've got some extra even goodies here that I can send. I got a bunch of stickers from, from Hack5 and from uh, tech tips and from Tech Ninja and all those. I'll send you a whole packet of uh, uh, swag from uh, from Hack Five and all that stuff. So, so let's take a look at this thing. All right. So all we know is the local police just arrested a suspect believed to be the notorious Papa Smurphy, an online pizza trader. Uh, any violation of the federal pizza law is a serious crime. Convicted offenders, uh, for example, first-time offender convicted under 18 USJ 2251 faces fines, 15 to 30 years maximum in prison. A flash drive was recovered from the scene and was copied poorly. As best as you can, examine the contents for any incriminating evidence. So we're looking for some evidence here that they broke in the law. And this, this thing does have several steps. When you find the answer, it's going to look like HTS and in curly brackets, it's going to have the, the password to, to complete this mission. And so, of course, you need to download the file. It's a WAR file, about 12 megs, and I've already got it downloaded. So let's take a look. This is what you're going to come up with. You're going to have a couple of picture files, actually three of them, three JPEGs. You're going to have a text file, an Excel file, a URL link back to hack the site, a PDF that explains Bitcoins and how they work, and an MP3 file. So you're going to open these up, take a look at them just to see what they are, um, and we'll get into the ones that I've been playing with mostly here in a couple of minutes, but uh, you know, if you open up, say, this picture file, right, there you go, so there's the picture file, and there's the other picture file, okay, there's another picture file, right. the PDF, the Bitcoin PDF, uh, which explains, you know, the electronic system, and how it works, as well as an MP3 file, etc., etc. And then there is an Excel file in here also. Well, just looking at these files, something should kind of stand out. If you look at the file, the file type, and the file sizes. Okay. Now, this is not a give me. Sometimes file sizes are that large. But we see this JPEG here is 89K. This JPEG here, 57K. This JPEG here, 10,000K. So we're dealing with pretty much of a 10 meg JPEG, which can easily happen. I've seen JPEGs upwards of six, seven, eight hundred megs, and it's a legit file. But if we take a look at the properties of this thing, um, 
uh, you know, let's just go down into the generals. Um, <clears throat> you know, what we can see is, uh, in fact, let me go into here. In fact, we won't even worry about the properties of it. Let's do this. And take a look at some of them. Sometimes it will show it to us. You may have to go into something else and take a look at it. I'll go into something else and take a look at it. Um, <clears throat> to where we can see, uh, and we can see it in something else, but you can see how big the file is. You know, because it, right here, of course, it's, it's going to say, uh, well, that's just flash drive. Let's make sure we have oops, just this one file. We just want the properties that one file. Okay, so this is just a JPEG file. 9.89 megs. Okay, here's the details of it. This thing is only 500 pixels by 500 pixels at 100 DPI. Very low res and a very small image. It should not be anywhere near 10 megs. So that should let us know that there is something else buried inside of that file. Okay. So we know we're going to have to do some carving. We got to figure out what else is hidden inside of that file. Now, if we were to open this thing up in something like hex edit. Okay. This is what we're looking at. Okay, <clears throat> this is the hex code, this is the ASCII equivalent. <clears throat> Notice that files get their extensions and, and how they're built by their headers and their trailers. Everything in between is the file itself. Well, that's where this comes into play this text file right here called Siggy's. Right, let's open it up in something that's a little bit easier to read. Uh, let's open it up with WordPad. Okay. We have a Siggy's.txt file. Well, if I were to just to search uh, for JPEG. Okay, there we go. Here's some JPEGs. <laughs> right here. You know, uh, JPEG, JPGs, etc., etc. Uh, the trailer, the end of the file, is always going to end in FFD9. Okay? And start with FFD8FF. Now, the extra one, it may not always start with E1, depending on the type of JPEG. But these are your headers. That's your trailer. So inside of here, see there's FFD8FF. FFD8FF. That's the beginning of the JPEG. Somewhere along the line, we're going to run into FFD9. So if I go here, and if I do a search for hex for FFD9, Now, if this is my first FFD9, everything from here all the way back to the top, all the way to here, is going to be one picture. Everything after that is another file. So if I kind of you know, scroll down to where you know, that ends, oops, a little too far. Right there. Some to it five eight six one. That's the beginning of another file. Now we may have some offsets that we have to deal with and things like that. So some of these we may have to skip, which makes data carving manually very, very difficult. Because sometimes there's some padding inside of there and you can't use every single bit of it. Because if I look for uh, 5A61 inside of here, I may not come back with anything. 
Let's see, I'll say 5A61. See, it says, okay, well, I didn't find anything that starts with that. Well, there are offsets and stuff that make things a little bit different. So I may have to deal with 61, 72, 21 or something, or especially these right here, 1A07. Um, so let me find that one. Uh, 1A07. <laughs> Okay, and it's very possible. 1807 starts with 526172. Let's see, that starts with 5A6172. 21, 1A07. Okay, it was slightly different, but it's very possible that this right here is the beginning of a war file. Okay. So <clears throat> that's when we get into manual carving. So that's why this file is here. Uh, we have to make matches. Well that's if you're going to manually carve. There is a way to get this out of your way. There is a way to uh, have a program carve for you. Now a program that I like to use, that I use, I'm on my Windows box now, but on my Linux box, a program that I like to use is a program called Scalpel. Now, Scalpel, I'll show you my, uh, this is my um, folder for Scalpel. There's the Scalpel executable. It runs on configuration files really what you have to do is you have to modify these configuration files so I would say open them with WordPad they're easier to read and then you scroll down through these and everything when you install Scalpel or when you download it and put it on your machine all of these are going to be commented out you just uncomment the file types that you're looking for. So I have JPEGs uncommented, I have pings uncommented, uh, I have a couple of movie files uncommented. You don't want to uncomment everything or you're going to get a lot of, a lot of false positives. They also have some special ones already in Scalpel for looking for databases, um, office documents, executables, HTMs, image files, log files, emails, um, PGPs when it comes to emails, when you're dealing with encrypted emails, VMs, WINS, etc. You can use any of those. Well, I've already put the file in here called uh, shh.jpg. That's the one I want to run Scalpel on. So I'm just going to run Scalpel space shh jpeg and if I don't give it a, a configuration file it's gonna use this one by default scalpel.conf and I let it run it came back and it says scalpel is done files carb 2 elapsed 0 seconds it is gonna make an output folder and inside of there it makes a folder called JPEGs and there's my two JPEGs. There was a hidden JPEG inside of there. Okay. So what I'm going to do, I may need those. So I'm going to create a new folder. I'm going to call this um, found images and I'm going to take these two pictures and put them inside of here because I may need them later on. Now, if you want to run Scalpel again, you need to get rid of this folder or tell it to go to a different folder. Now, what if we think maybe there are emails? Well, remember, there is one called s underscore mail config. What if we think there are emails in there? Well, you still run Scalpel but you're going to tell it to use a different configuration file. 
So the switch is dash C space and this one is S underscore mail dot C O N F space S H H dot J P G. Okay. It says files carved 166. Well, if we go back in here and take a look at our output file, we have some possible, unless these are red herrings or just false positives, we have some emails. So let's just open one up. Okay. That's what I get. Okay. Says it may contain extra line breaks. That's fine if I remove them. Still not going to get much anything. So we could go back through. We could take a look at any of these. And there's one there. Again, just looks like garbage. So, you know, maybe it has, uh, you know, PGP files with it. So, what if I think these are important? Well, you know, if you think they're important, move them here. And I'll just call these um, uh, found emails. They may mean absolutely nothing, but they may be something. I'll get rid of my scalpel folder. So, what if they're just encrypted? Well, well, what type of encryption do we deal with with email? Well, how about PGP, pretty good privacy. So, how about I run scalpel, and I run my PGP against it. S underscore PGP dot C-O-N-F space S-H-H dot J-P-G. Still looking. Sometimes it will hang. Uh, a lot of times I actually have it tell me verbose what it's doing so I notice if it's hung or if it just didn't find anything. Um, you know, because right now it's just in uh, file pass one of two. But either it's getting confused because it can't read headers. We'll give it a second to see if it comes back with anything. I don't remember if I actually configured my PGP. Let's take a look at our output file just an audit log it's looking for a little bit more than what I really wanted to look for but that's okay but nothing down at the bottom really found no files I can try to quit it, but it's probably already done. And it is. It's already done. Not finding anything. So, nothing inside of there. Okay. So, where we are right now is, and again, I could run these through other configurations. I could take a look for log files. I could take a look for executables. I could take a look for docs. Or I could really just go into scalpel.conf and open up more file types. So what I want you guys to do, these are the images that we have. That's the original image pulled out of the big image. And that's the other image. 
So understand how header files and trailers work. And you'll see those from Siggy's. In fact, if you Google it, what you're going to come up with by, by Googling this thing, if let's say you just look for file signatures. If you Google file signatures, you may run across this uh, page here, GaryKessler.net. He's going to explain file signatures. But look down here at the bottom and look at the table that he has on his page. That's the exact table that you're looking at. He's got some extra things in it. But that's the exact table that you're looking at. So what we need to do is figure out how to carve up this major document, this, uh, this very large graphics file, into multiple files. Something has got to give us some information. Now you, yeah, there are some red herrings in here. You're gonna, you're gonna run down a path like those emails. Those emails may be absolutely nothing, but if we were able to pull the PGPs, maybe we we could connect them back up and be able to read the emails. Um, you know, we may be able to 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 pull some media. Uh, may be able to pull some log files you are going to pull some folders that have a lot of data that really don't mean anything. So this is where I'm going to leave you guys. Play around with carving. Um, I've done most of my carving through Scalpel, um, but I have used other programs uh, such as Autopsy. Um, I've done some, some photo rack. Uh, I've done photo forensics. Um, I've taken a look at EXIF data uh, to see if any of that is any giveaway. Really what we're looking for is some incriminating evidence on this guy. When we find that incriminating evidence, we're going to find our password. So I'm going to leave it to you guys for now. I'm still going to work on it. I've only been working on it for a little bit now, but I'm still going to work on it. But if, if one of you, you guys or ladies out there have figured out a way to take it even a step further, if you found some legitimate information, drop it in the comments box. We'll take a look from that and we'll build from that. We're going to keep adding on to this video. So this is basically just part one. We're going to keep adding on to this video and we're going to solve this one together because after this we're pretty much going to jump to a different site which are much more complex uh, challenges multiple step challenges uh, to where it's going to take a little bit longer to break so now we're going to start busting these things together okay so what i've given you and the two images i have you may be able to work off that who knows what that second image is used for throw everything you have at it and let me know what you find out at the same time if I don't hear from anybody anytime soon I'll go ahead once I figure it out I'll go ahead and start posting phase two and phase three until we bust this thing wide open but until then get to work on this thing let me know what you find out uh, drop it in the comments box and we will pull it from there so good luck on the first person who could break this thing open and uh, we'll see what we can give you for your for your efforts. All right, guys. Uh, until next time, let's break this thing open. Have a good one.